Okay, today we are learning how to do curve fitting with quadratic models. We are still learning about quadratics and now we're going to take data and fit it into a quadratic model. Um, we're using quadratic functions to model data. An example, we have this which is our parent function, f of x equals x squared. If I set up a table sort of modeling this graph, you see that for every x that I plug into the function, I get x squared. What we're going to look at is the first differences between the, x, the f of x's or the y's and the second differences. Um, differences mean subtraction and when our second differences are equal, then um, it is a quadratic function. We need to make sure that our x's are constant though, our change in x is constant. So if I look at these are constant, you know it's change of 1 all the way across. And if I do the first differences between the f of x's, you know, 9 minus 4 is 5, 4 minus 1 is 3, etc., etc., those are not constant. If I do the second differences, 5 minus 3 is 2, 3 minus 1 is 2, etc., once those second differences are the same, then it is a quadratic function. Let's try a real one. Determine whether the data set could represent a quadratic function. The x's must be equally spaced, and we're going to look for the first differences and the second differences. Okay, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, 1 minus 7, negative 6, 7 minus 17, negative 10, 17 minus 31, negative 14. Okay, those aren't constant, and we don't care. We want to know about the second differences. Negative 2 minus 6 is 4, 4 and 4. The second differences are constant, so yes. It is a quadratic um, function. Another example. Determine whether the data set could represent a quadratic function. We have equally spaced x values. We take the second differences. Difference here, negative 2, negative 6, negative 18, negative 54. Our second difference is negative 2 minus 6, negative 6 is 4. Negative 6 minus negative 18 is 12. Negative 8 minus negative 54 is 36. They are not constant, therefore it does not represent a quadratic function. Let's move on to something different. Remember that when we learned about lines, we learned that you need at least two points to define a line. We could write a linear equation using any two points. I would give you two ordered pairs and you would be able to write a linear equation with those ordered pairs. We can also write a quadratic equation using three points. So we're going to be writing a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, when we're just given three ordered pairs. So our first example, we're going to write a quadratic function that fits these points. Um, and there's our quadratic function, our standard form. I've color coordi coordinated this for your to help you out. Um, those are all the three points. I have x and y, x and y, x and y. I'm going to plug those into the standard form. And then we're going to have three equations with three unknowns that you get to solve for. So there's f of x, which is y, negative 5. For x, I plug in 1, 1 squared and 1. And if I look down here, I've simplified it. Okay, a, 1, b, c. So a, b, c equals negative 5. a plus b plus c equals negative 5. That's our first equation. Next, I put in a 5 and a 3, 9a, 3b. 9a plus 3b plus c equals 5. That's our second equation. 4 and 16. 16 is our y, 4 is our x. 16a, 3b. Ooh, sorry about that. There's our first mistake. That should be a 4 right there. 16a plus 4b plus c equals 16. That is equation number 3. 
Now we have three equations, three unknowns. We're going to solve it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Three equations, three unknowns. Here I've told you each step I'm going to do. Equation 2 minus equation 1. Equation 2 minus equation 1. I do the math here, and my C term cancels out. And that's our goal for these first two, is always to get that C term to cancel out because the C term is never going to have a coefficient in front of it. Then I take equation 3 minus equation 1. 3 minus 1. And the C term cancels out again. Now I have two equations with two unknowns, and we're going to solve that using elimination. Okay? Equation 4, I just labeled it again. Equation 5. Okay, I write them over each other. I'm going to cancel out the B term, so I'll multiply the first one by a negative 3, and the second one by a 2. And there we go. Add those together, the B term cancels out, and I'm left with 6A equals 12. Divide both sides by 6, A equals 2. Plug that back into one of these equations. I picked 4, A equals 2, and solve for B. B equals negative 3. Plug A and B back into any of the first equations, and I get C equals negative 4. So we have A, B, and C. We're just going to put that back into our standard form, and we get... 2x squared, which is a, minus 3x, which is b, minus 4. And that's our answer. Let's try one more. Excuse me. Write a quadratic function that fits the points, three given points. I set up the same table. I plug in negative 3 and 0. 0 and 1, 1 and 2. First equation, the a and the b cancel out. I'm left with c equals negative 3. Second equation, I have a plus b plus c equals 0. Third equation, I have 4a plus 2b plus c equals 1. Equation 1, 2, and 3. Now, I have three equations and three unknowns. That first equation is awesome because I've solved for one of the variables. I'm going to substitute negative 3, equation 1, into equation 2 and equation 3. Okay? Equation 2. a plus b plus c equals 0. I'm going to replace that c with a negative 3. I get a plus b equals 3. Move it over, and I just renamed it. Equation 3. I replace c with negative 3, and I get 4a plus 2b equals 4. I have two new equations. Our goal, remember, is always to get two equations and two unknowns, because we can solve that using elimination. Using equation 4 and 5, solve using elimination. Equation 4, equation 5. I multiply equation 4 by negative 2. Negative 2a, negative 2b equals negative 6. Add that to equation 5, and the b term cancels out. a equals negative 1. Plug that back into an equation, and I get b equals 4. Plug, and I already have c, so we actually have a, b, and c. That's what we're looking for. a is negative 1, x squared, b is 4x, c is negative 3. We have solved our three equations and three unknowns. Okay, one more thing to show you, and we're done. And it's actually very cool. How else can we solve a system of equations? Matrices. You guys loved matrices. So we're going to solve the system of equations using matrices. You remember our REF in your calculator. I have the system of equations that we worked on with the last example. Change that into a matrix, an augmented matrix, 0, 0, and 1 because I don't have an A or a B term, and your answer. Your coefficients are 1, 1, and 1, 1, 1, and 1. Your answer is 0. Your coefficients are 4, 2, and 1, 4, 2, and 1, and your answer is 1. Put it into your calculator. Hit RREF, 
And remember, you need the identity matrix A, B, and C. We get the exact same answer, but with less pencil being used. That's all we have for today. Thank you.